sad. We, some of us, we're familiar with the Hegelian dialectic. It's called problem, reaction, solution. We bring forth the problem, we prompt a reaction, and we also have the solution. Everybody seems to be using COVID-19 as an excuse for everything in the world. But what's really disturbing is this. Now, we realize that we have civil unrest going on here in the United States of America. We all do. And we all know the reason why. Not only in the United States of America, but this is a good. Think about it. This is gone worldwide. They know that there's something wrong systematically systematically in every single country of the world concerning its law enforcement and policing. Something is gravely wrong. All right? Now, think about this. While everybody is, or at least while the news media continues to keep cramming COVID-19 down our damn throats and trying to alarm us and, and trying to put fear all over the whole damn population and scared to go outside and even breathe, over at the House of Representatives, you know what they're doing? They're over there, got a bill. I, now, don't quote me. I, I think if my memory serves me correct, and it may not, but you can check it out. You can look me up on, or look it up online. Bill HR, I think it's 5717. These boogers are in there behind the scenes. Look at this. Trying to raise, look at this. It's either vice versa one way or the other. A 30% sales tax on ammunition and a 50% sales tax on buying firearms. Can you believe it? Here we are in a lead so-called epidemic and pandemic and they still have not stopped in their motivation to try to disarm the American public. No matter what, it's always the guns, the guns, the guns because I'll tell you the reason why. They want us like a lot of these other illiterate countries, these docile countries, these impotent countries, who do not have the ability to defend themselves. And whether we like it, comprehend it or not, one of the greatest things about this country, whether people like it or not, and I'm gonna quote a, a passage from a wise person. He that travels much, knows much. And I have been in a hell of a lot of countries in this world. A hell of a lot of countries in this world. And when I come back to America, the one thing that gives me the peace, the safety and security more than anything is me being able to not only possess my firearms but to continue to keep training with them in my own backyard staying proficient staying tight that's right i mean it, it's just it's just something about it to be able to know that you can defend yourself here it is the whole purpose and reason why the constitution of the united states of america was written so that we could defend ourselves from all enemies foreign and domestic most people don't want to tell you this, but the truth is the reason why we have the Second Amendment is so we can defend ourselves against a tyrannical government gone damn wild. And that's the reason why you see people protesting out on the streets today. That's why there's a lot of shots fired all across the valley, a lot of volleys going off today. Because you see, when the people have equal firepower, respect comes. And again, I'll use it again. Most of some people remember Occupy Wall Street. There was two different responses. I'm going to use New York and Arizona. In New York, when the people can't defend themselves, the police pepper sprays them, chokes them out, uh, kicks them, uh, do everything to them because the people do not have the ability to defend themselves. And no matter how peaceful you try to be, they still abuse the populace because the power delegated by the state. Now, make no mistake about it. It's not because the police individually within them own selves and their own manhood have any power. It's just that the people are more fearful of laws written on the book than they are the people who's wearing the uniform. Because the people who wear the uniform can sit up there and lie because of the laws that's written on the book to protect them and then thereby destroy your life sending you to a prison and spending a lot of years behind bars. And people love freedom. That's the only reason why. It's not that the people are afraid of police. The people are not afraid of police. Uh, police morale and police acceptance uh, is at an all-time low in this country. Nobody trusts the police. Nobody gives a damn about the police, to tell you the truth. Uh, we can police ourselves. And 
When you think about defunding the police, I, I, I listen to people all the time. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Defunding the police is not talking about just getting rid of them. It's talking about some of these things that are allocated to them. It could be better using other community programs to bear, thereby strengthen the community rather than continuing to keep militarizing the police and continue to keep making them even more of a tyrannical authority. That's what it really means to Arizona. Out in Arizona, the people can peacefully protest because they got AR-15 strapped around their necks and they got glocks strapped to the size of their legs. And the police is on one side of the street, the people on the other side of the street. And then you've got people that are armed and ready out there that are ensuring the rights of the people to be able to peacefully protest, to peacefully assemble. And guess what? You don't see those police out there crossing the line, spraying them with pepper spray, washing them down with or, or fire hydrant hoses and everything else, or crossing the line and abusing them and beating them with batons. You don't see that because of an armed citizenry. And you know, it's sad, but we have to continue to keep talking about stuff like this over and over and over and over again until it shocks the mind. See, a lot of people are realizing that they've been on the wrong side of history all this time. And the good old boy club is not liking all these changes that's coming, but whether they like it, comprehend, understand or not, it's totally irrelevant. The change is already here and it's, gonna, and it's happening and it's gonna continue to keep happening. I think it's a big mistake digressing here to the NBA that they're so worried about their NBA season and LeBron James worried about trying to win another championship or have another opportunity to win a championship rather than taking this particular situation that we got going on here in this country, the systemic white supremacy and racism that many of us experience on a daily basis, sidetracking the message. My advice is, is nobody watch one damn NBA game. Don't even think you can't go to them anyway. They're in a damn bubble. Just leave the shit alone. Leave damn sports alone. How about that? And concentrate on the things that's going to better you in your life, in your perspective areas. Learn how to defend. Store food. Get out of the damn cities. Learn how to be mutually assistant with people who are going to be physically responsible and not have an entitlement mentality and then later on come around because they don't have a damn mentality whatsoever at all of Thanksgiving to where they're going to um, depend on you solely for their livelihood and support simply because they themselves did not have the awareness nor the comprehension nor the ability to be able to prepare when they had a chance. No, they lived their lives in riotous living. They didn't prepare themselves. They didn't care nothing about the warnings. They didn't care nothing about those of us out here who on social media doing our best to try to give good reliable information to people to help them to be able to preserve themselves rather than depending on the system. How did it work for you? Some of you didn't fare too well when you had to set up and be in food lines, depending on the world to give you water, depending on the world to give you food when you should be actually doing it for yourself, storing it up for yourself. See, right now we're in the green. Just store that stuff, food, right now. Right now is the time to store food. You can barely even buy ammo nowadays. And even if you do get it online, you're going to pay a premium price. They mean they are jacking, you know, price gouging. That's called American entrepreneurship. Anytime you have some type of epidemic or pandemic, I mean, come on, it's the American way. What you do, you try to do everything you can to make fortunes and advancements off of other people's misfortune and stuff by price gouging them. That's what they do in the hotels whenever something goes. You get a tornado or you get a hurricane. They hit the East Coast. First thing they do, they know people is getting ready to get up out of these places and they jump up the hotel prices 300%. American capitalism, free market capitalism, what they call the competition. Is that not a sickness and a disease? At least in my book, it is. Where's the morality? And that's another thing we need to talk about today. Who defines morality? And I want everybody to go over and check out Sports Illustrated because they're writing articles on straightway. Can you imagine a sports Illustrated sports or sports, sports illustrated, writing articles on straightway based upon false witnesses and disgruntled people who don't even know what the hell they're talking about and don't even know me. Dare not even peer into these people's lives to see if they even have character about themselves. People whose lives you can't even look into because they're so secluded, because they're so wicked will receive a slander from anyone. And Sports Illustrated is now interested in what they call, quote unquote, a little small religious community. I'll tell you what I do. Thank you for the publicity. 
Because what's going to happen is some intelligent folks are going to read that article, both of them. And then they're going to actually go back and they're going to come over to my YouTube page and they're going to check me out. And then those people who have just a minute form of intelligence, they're going to become part of the ministry, become great supporters. Kind of like all other doctors and lawyers and engineers and professionals we have in this ministry. See, they may mean it for evil. But Yah is going to turn it out for good. That's like Satan. If he knew what would have took place after he crucified the Holy One of Israel, Jesus Christ, while hell was celebrating. And then when he buzzed hell wide open and took the keys to the gates, resurrected. Woo, boy, they would have never, ever, ever tried to crucify or kill the Holy One. But it all happened because, you know, surely, surely an atla or a serpent will bite without any enchantment. Go and learn what that means. And I pray that you get comprehension. I pray you get understanding. That is my prayer. Y'all blessed day. I got to go into this business and take care of some business.